Dana Carson, you know this is a day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Will you rejoice and be glad in it? I want to welcome you to Throwback Thursday, man. And this Throwback Thursday, we're getting ready to throw you back to a message I preached in Austin, Texas, that actually shook that city as it related to praise and worship. Believe it or not, there was a time when people, especially in uh, churches of color, they did more devotional services. They didn't do praise service. And man, I preached this message called Sin Judah First. And man, that talked about the necessity of praise. I, let me stop just talking about it and let you hear. Here, let me throw that on back to Sin Judah First, and I'll be back with you. Genesis. 49 and 8. Now, the, the patriarchal blessing was the blessing that the father would leave his sons when he had his last words when he was about to die. Now, in verse 8, he prophesies to all of his children, but in verse 8, he gives the prophetic word to Judah. And let's see what he says. Genesis 49 about, excuse me, Genesis 49 verse 8 about Judah. Whenever we see Judah, replace it with praise belongs to God or praise. So it says, praise you are he whom your brother shall praise. Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Which means then, as we look at the concept of praise, praise is infectious. Now, now, now I want you to get this now. Praise is infectious. You start off praising and it makes somebody else praise. See, people love jubilistic environments. Why do you think they go to football games, basketball games, rather than watch them at home. Because you can see better at home than you can at the game, especially if you don't have one of those real expensive tickets. You sit way up there somewhere in the nosebleed section and the people look about that big. If you were at home on t looking at a television, you'll get a better look at the game. But what people like is the ambiance. They like the atmosphere. They like how jubilistic it is. Praise is infectious. When you have an environment that is full of praise. It draws people. People don't want to go to funerals. People can't stand funerals, but they love birthdays. So then, praise, it says here, is infectious. Now watch this. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. It says that when you praise, praise then puts your hands on the enemy's neck. See, the devil can't stand when you praise God. See, the devil will do anything he possibly can to steal your praise. That's the reason when you find yourself not able to get into it, you know that you're being robbed right now. The devil is trying to kidnap God's praise because he's trying to hold you hostage. If you want to get out of the bind that you're in, you're going to have to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That means you got to clothe yourself with praise. I may not feel like it on the, on the inside, but I'm going to make sure that I put on the garment of praise and I'm going to do it on the outside your father's children shall bow down before you says that praise will cause you to be an honorable person see now I, I hope you get this because so many people be little praise and, and, and people think because praise in church Primarily in our contemporary churches, rooted in black Pentecostal churches, that praise is a black thing. Because black folk have rhythm, don't mean that they're naturally praising God. Just because the music is going and you that don't mean you praising God. When you praise, 
it says you become honorable. God does some things for you. Now, there are people that's looking at you. And some people don't understand how it is that every Sunday you got to praise. <laughs> and if they sit down and talk to you, they'll find out that just because you got to praise doesn't mean you don't have a problem. Now, is not contingent on my predicament I praise God because of who he is what he's done what he said and what I'm expecting I give God praise because praise is who I am Jesus said that out of the mouths of babes and suckling shall I receive perfect praise just just stick with me just just stick with me we have too many people that want to come to worship but don't want to praise you too cool you too educated you too deep you have too many zeros behind your salary or you have too many zeros before the decimal but you don't have a whole number <laughs> whichever whichever is the case you don't want to praise but I want to show you something here help me Holy Ghost verse 9 Judah is a lion's whip from the prey my son you have gone up he bows down he lies down as a lion and as a lion he shall who shall rouse him now it says that praise causes you to progress you start off a whip, and then you come a full-grown lion. So it says that in praise, once you learn how to praise, God takes the things that used to intimidate you when you were a whip, when you were just a little bitty baby, and God then causes you to rise up. And then he says, who's going to rouse you now? Because you know how to praise. Look to the person next to you and say, you got to learn how to praise. See, let me tell you something. When you start praising God, demons tremble. The enemy disappears. He doesn't know how to handle your praise. He loves for you to cry and complain. He loves for you to sit down and be analytical and try to figure it out. Oh, but when you start sending those signals up to God, he says, I don't understand. Listen, listen let, me, let me move on. Then it says this. Then it says the scepter. Now we're talking about praise. We're talking about Judah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Woo, God. Listen. A scepter is a symbol of authority and acceptance. You could not go before the king unless they granted you the scepter. Anybody that had the scepter could now enter the room with the king. But if you didn't get the scepter... You could not enter the room. So now, it says here, <laughs> the scepter shall not depart from Judah, which means as long as you praise, you can get in the room. Now, you, 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 you don't get that. See, let, let me help you. Let me help you here. My God, this message is, I start not to mess with it. Listen. In the tabernacle, you had three compartments. The outer court, the inner court, and the most holy place. So see, he just understands the word. So he's getting revelation at another level. That's all, see? More you learn it, more you start jumping and shouting. Some of you can't jump and shout yet because you're trying to put it all together. But that's okay. Now watch this. Now, the most holy place is the place where God himself is on the day of atonement only one could go in there was the priest to offer sacrifice so now when we talk about the scepter being granted we're talking about the abilities to get into the inner or the most holy place with God now Psalm 22 and 3 says this 
Please listen to me because I'm trying to change you so that next year you won't come to church sitting down like a lump on a log. Now, listen. Psalm 2020, I ain't, listen, I'm not excited simply because it's my temperament. I'm not excited simply because I'm a black man. I wish I could give you the story about how I got introduced with praise because I didn't believe in all that stuff. I wish I would have got up and talked about dancing in church looking like a big fool till I got the revelation that it wasn't about me, it was about God. Now, it says the scepter shall not depart from Judah. That means that when I want an audience with God, when I need a breakthrough, the first thing I ought to do is praise. Why do you think the devil won't let you praise God? Because he knows that you will get a breakthrough. So he tries to tell you that's stupid, that's ineffective, that's not going to happen. You too intelligent. Just read the Bible and figure it out. Now watch this. Watch this because we got some revelation to drop on you today. Now watch this. So now the Bible says in Psalm 22 and 3. And God inhabits the praises of his people. Now, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. And God inhabits the praises of his people. Now, think the term I'm Yeshuv in Psalm 22 and 3, which talks about a throne. And every time we Praise God. One praise sends a leg. Another praise sends another leg. Another praise sends a leg. And another praise. And to finally we have a throne form. See now. You cannot. Invite the king. In to speak to you. Without proper protocol. Listen. You know how to honor natural kings. And if President Bush walked in an assembly, everybody in the place would stand. Uh, okay, we don't have to go to the president. You say uh, that's just too far-fetched. It's just one person. Well, when a judge walks in the courtroom, they say, well, all rise for the judge. They don't care about your personality. They don't care about your background, your ethnicity, your culture, your temperament. When the judge walks in, you better get your butt up. For they hold you into contempt, contempt or something and you've been the guy fined for not acting right in that man's courtroom. Now, you mean to tell me that the judge can walk in a courtroom and demand everybody to stand but God can't walk in his church and tell you to stand up on your feet and lift up your hands and give me some praise. What's wrong with us? You understand it in the courtroom, but you don't understand it in the church. Now, now y'all sit down, sit down, sit down. Cause I want to finish this. I want to finish this. I want to finish this. Now, says the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. <laughs> Look to your, to your person next to you and say, my, my feet are connected to my praise. <laughs> now, 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 watch this. I, I've, got to, I've, got, I've got to move here. Now, it says, until Shiloh comes, which means peace. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. Now, Shiloh is being used here as a proper noun, which is speaking of the person of Jesus. And it's saying that Jesus is going to come through Judah. Matter of fact, let me just give this to you real quick in case I don't get to it later on. Revelations 5 and 5 says he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. That means that he becomes a lion when people begin to praise. That means you want to get stuff out of you, then you go and give him praise. Uh, and you call your lion because he's a lion. I'm trying not to, listen to me, I'm trying not to get too excited 
Because I don't want any of you to believe we're moving into sensationalism. I don't want you to believe that we're moving just strictly in emotions. But let me tell you something about emotions. I don't know. The old folks said it like this. They said, I wouldn't have a religion. I couldn't feel sometimes. I wouldn't have a woman. I couldn't feel sometimes. I wouldn't have a... You, want, you don't want nobody to just be with you. You want somebody to show some passion. So why would you have a God you can't show no passion for? You can show passion for a football game, a basketball game, a soap opera, a movie. Some folk sit there at movies and cry. But think it's ridiculous to cry in church. Ooh, look at it. Now, now watch this, watch this. I want, I want to help you here. Now, I'm almost finished. Now, what? I ain't almost finished, but listen. Verse 11. Listen to me lying over there. Now listen. Listen, uh, verse 11. <laughs> Binding his donkey to the vine. It's all kind of revelation in here on praise. I want you to hear this. Binding the donkey, his donkey, to the vine. Now, donkey was a symbol of labor. <laughs> it's a symbol of labor, and it was also very common. Almost everybody had a donkey. Now, the vine speaks of God. It speaks of the heaven, the heavenly realm, the will of God. You know, Jesus told my father is the true, true vine. See, so the vine here. So now, it says that he binds his donkey to the vine, which means he connects in praise. You connect your labor to the will of God. What happens is when you're praising, there's a divine connection that takes place. And God starts to give you prophetic insight. Now watch this. And his donkey coat to the choice vine, to the ultimate will of God for your life and praise. Now watch this, I've got to move. He washed his garments in, the, in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Now, which means this is speaking of wine, grapes, also wine. Praise intoxicates you. <laughs> praise helps you to have a courage you wouldn't normally have. Then it says, his eyes are darker than wine and his teeth whiter than milk. Milk adds strength. Wine adds Confidence. In praise, you get strength and confidence. Uh, which means, if you come and you don't get strength and confidence, it's because you've not praised. See, now you can do this. When the choir get up and they're like, you can do that and still not be praised. Because praise has to be intentional. It has to be some heart-to-heart -heart communication going on. And see, and when you're praising God, you can care less about who's looking. This is your moment with God. You're in corporate worship. So therefore, this is the proper place to give God some praise. So you can care less about how anybody feels about it. Are you with me? Now listen, that's the, that's the patriarchal blessing. Then you move to... Deuteronomy 33, and I'm getting ready to move as quickly as I can. Deuteronomy 33. Now this is the Mosaic blessing. Moses <clears throat> himself gave prophetic utterances to the 12 tribes. Moses says in Deuteronomy 33 and 7, and this he said of Yahuda, praise. Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him to his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and may you be a help against his enemies. Moses says that when you praise, God hears. And the thing that you're trying to get to, God will bring to you. to bring you into it rather than you having to seek it and go find it and then it says and he'll be a help against your enemies now
When you look at Judah, look at Exodus 28. This stuff is getting better and better. Full of revelation in here. Exodus 28. Exodus 28, beginning at verse 17. I got to come down. I'm going to close this thing and I'm going to close it quick and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, bring it on home and bring it on home right. Exodus 28, verse 15. Now watch this. I want you to get this revelation. You shall make the breastplate, because this is Judah and the priesthood. You shall make the breastplate of judgment, artistically woven, according to the workmanship of the ephod. You shall make it of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen. You shall make it. I don't have time to talk about these colors. But I want to let you know that every single detail in scripture concerning the priesthood, the tabernacle, means something. I will just give you briefly what these colors stand for. Gold is the, stands for eternal deity, the divine. Blue stands for grace. Purple stands for royalty. Scarlet Red stands for man, and the white stands for holiness or purity, the, the, the fine linen here. Now, I want you to know you have God extending grace. Purple is the result of blending blue and scarlet together, and then it brings forth white. These that have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Now, 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 the scriptures are full of revelation. You just got to know how to go in there and get it. Now, now watch this. And you shall put settings of stone in it, four rows of stones. The first row, here it is. The, everybody say the first row. first row. The first row is what? Shall be what? Sardius, not a sardine. Now listen, sardius. Okay, now, I want you to get this. Now, in Hebrew, they went from, we go from, we go from left to right. They go from right to left. Now, the breastplate of the priest, I want, we're still talking about Judah now. We're still talking about Yahuda. Now, in the breastplate, when the priest, the priest had a blessed breastplate, and inside it, it had what was called the Urim and the Thummim. Now, one was a black stone, one was a white stone. If it was white, it was right. It was a positive word. It was a positive word from God. If it was black, it was a negative. The answer was no. If it was white, that meant yes. And the priesthood, the, uh, the, the breastplate had a repository for the Urim and the Thummim. And they put them inside. And what would happen is, when Israel needed a word from God, the priest would have to adorn himself with his garments and he would then go in the presence of God and the first, the first thing that shined when the Shekinah would hit the breastplate of the priest is the first stone which was Sardius. The Sardius in the Hebrew language is the word Odin. Odin means Blood, red. You have Adam, red man, earth, earth man. Now, on the first stone, you had Odom. I, I mean, that's what it was. It was a red stone, Odom. But written across the first stone was Yahuda, <laughs> which said, Man must praise God. When the priests went into the presence of God, they would do a jig before the Lord. See, the Hebrew people were very, the Jewish people were very animated, very musical dancing people. I told you, if you ever go to the bookstore in New York and you hit it towards the prayer times, they'll stop what they're doing, they'll start doing their bow. They were animated, they were movers. Now, Christianity is Judeo-Christianity. We come out of that. We're not supposed to lose that. Now, when it came to the priest,
priesthood. The first thing God wanted to see was praise. Then, if you look at Numbers 2 and 1, we're coming to a rapid close now. Numbers 2 and 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, Every one of the children of Israel shall come by his own standard, his own flag. Beside the emblems of his father's house, they shall camp some distance from the tabernacle, some distance from the tabernacle of meetings. But watch this. On the east side, toward the rising of the sun, those of the standard of the forces with Judah shall camp according to their armies. God said, the first tribe I want towards the tabernacle is Judah. <laughs> Says, that's the very first, when, 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 when the tabernacle, when the, when, the, when the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night rises and it's time to move, God says the first one I want setting out is Judah. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Now, look at Judges 1. I'm almost finished. All right. Are you getting some? Are you getting some? Now you're getting some. Judges 1 and 4. I'm in Joshua. Can't find it there. Oh. Uh, come on, fingers act right. Somebody pray for my fingers. Okay, judge, here you go. Judges, watch this. Judges 1 and 2. Let's look at the verse 2. And the Lord said, Judah, I'm sorry, verse 1. Judges one and one. Now to the de death of Joshua it came, came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord saying, Who shall be first to go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Indeed, I have delivered the land into his hand. <laughs> now, 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 I want you, can you hear this? Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Listen. Who shall go up to possess what God has promised us? He says, send Judah first. The very first thing that supposed to go out before you in the midst of your battles is Judah. Praise. Now when we look at the scripture and we look at Jesus, Jesus teaches us that praise is priority. Jesus teaches us, he said that when you pray, Send praise first. First, he said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will. He says, hallowed be thy name. He's praising. The very first thing you're supposed to send in the midst of your battle is praise. But now why send praise? Because praise is body language. It is signals unto God. There are several words in the Hebrew language for praise. One of the words is zamar. Zamar means to praise God on the instruments. That means that instruments send a message. That means that God will give musicians, he will give psalmists, he will give them chords that will bless them, that will bless him. If, if, if they just praise what God will give him, God will give the organist some chords he'll give the good top player some chords he'll give the sax some he'll give the drummer a beat and, and it'll be a signal unto God that's the reason when they stand on these instruments they're not supposed to be getting a groove on they're not supposed to be jamming in front of you they're supposed to be sending signals unto God and see when they don't send signals unto God they miss what God wants to do for them and they also mess up the atmosphere of the house that means that when the organist sits down he's got to be ministering unto the Lord see if he ministers unto God then he ministers unto me see if they minister unto God then they minister unto you but now that's just one word look to your neighbor and say that's just one of them but then there is another word for praise, yada, and another one in that same family is toda, and yada and toda means thanks, giving, giving thanks to God. Now, the Bible says.
Bible says, enter his courts with, with praise. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. The very first thing we do before we on, on our way into the most holy place is that we got to come in the gates. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving and then we move into his courts with praise. So now, that word thanksgiving is yada. Yad is the Hebrew word for hand. So when it says yada, that means lift up your hands. Uh, when you're lifting up your hands, you ought to be saying, thank you, God. <laughs> thank you, God. Thank you, God. Sometimes you're going through, but you still know God is good. And you can't bring it out of your mouth, but you say. <laughs> and look to the person next to you saying, he understands that. See, the other is toda, which also means thanksgiving. But it also means of a reverential. You know that uh, when the police come and they get you, the law enforcement, you know, one of the very first things they tell you to do is stick them up. See, uh, see so when you come and you told all the Lord, you're sticking them up. You're saying, God, I surrender. You can have everything in me. Search me, Lord. And if you find anything that ought not be, take it out and strengthen me. See, so when I'm in service sometime, I can, even when it ain't praise service, I can bust out in a. Sometime the preaching is going on and you feel convicted. You say, you don't start getting upset because God found you out. You just lift up your hands and go into a praise because God is finding you out so that he can strengthen you. Then another word for praise is Barak. Barak means to kneel means to get down and kneel before him. All action words, all verbs. When I get on my knees, it's a sign of humility. It's a sign of humbling myself under the almighty hand of God. It doesn't matter if you look at me funny. It doesn't matter if I look crazy to you. It doesn't matter if you're not used to this. But I can't let you hinder God's praise because you don't know what God has done for me. Another Hebrew word for praise is chol. Chol means to dance, to twist and to twang like a bowstring. Now, chol means to dance, and as you dance, you pick up intensity. And as you pick up intensity, you become like a tornado. You become like a hurricane, and the things that are what happens when a hurricane? What happens when a tornado comes through? Anything in sight getting met. That means that when you dance before the Lord, that's stuff that's in your way. That's stuff you can't move. But when you start dancing and you pick it up and you get intensified and you start giving God praise, in the spirit, things start moving. <laughs> oh, see. See, listen, you, you, you don't believe that. See, you don't believe that. You think this is hype. Well, you look at Acts 16 and you'll find out that when Paul and Silas, they were in jail. Man. They were crying for a while and they found out that crying wasn't going to get them anywhere. And so the Bible said at midnight, Paul and Silas begin to sing praises unto God. And as they begin to sing praises unto God, the Bible said the earth started to shake. See, because when they started singing praises unto God, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's footstool. And when they begin to sing unto God, he started patting his feet. And when the Lord started patting his feet, anything under you got to move. Anything holding you got to move. Because God... How could God use something so simple because he uses the foolish things of this world to confound the 
Look to the person next to you say, don't fight it, just do it. Listen, you've got to send Judah first. Some people think that praise is not important. This And uh, the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Now, there's a distinction between praise and worship. People think that when they're worshiping God, then that's automatically praise, and it's not. Praise is a part of worship, but worship is your entire lifestyle before the Lord. Praise is an act towards God. You can worship, but never praise. Because it's an intentional, it's an action word, it's a verb. You can be a worshiper, but never praise. So you, you, the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Listen, send you the first. If this message blessed you, and you say, I want to learn more about that, send for the message in its entirety. Get an MP3, get an MP4. Listen, I did this message about 19 years ago. Uh, but before even then, this is my second version of it. I had done it. I had preached this message in the 90s. Somebody say, in the 90s, I wasn't even born. That's why it's throwback, baby, throwback. Listen, I know you may not be able to go back, but uh, it will, it will, listen, it'll bless you. Get a copy. And thank you so much for attending uh, and listening to Throwback uh, Thursday. And don't forget, the Lord put it on your heart. Send a seed. Be a blessing. Uh, we love you. I'll see you later. Hi, beloved. This is Dr. Dana Carson, affectionately known as the Kingdom Voice. You know, I work very, very hard to fulfill the purpose of God on my life and the church's life. And we take this gospel of the kingdom around the world. We are touching lives all over. We're touching lives globally. And I want you to partner with me so that we can do that in a more effective manner. And also that fruit may abound to your account. Every time I preach the gospel, that means that you're there preaching it with me because you're providing the necessary support that allows me to reach nations and people all over the world. I need your support. I want you to partner with me. If you click the link, it'll tell you a little bit more about our partner's ministry. But will you partner with me? I want you to be able to say, I partner with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministry, and we take the gospel of the kingdom around the world. Thank you. God bless.